welcome back again. Um, in this video I'm going to pretty much revisit the Obiani or shoulder roll move um, and go into more detail about it because a lot of people still have a little bit of trouble with this move, especially making it look smooth. Um, and there's pretty much three concepts I want to cover in this video in order to help this move look smooth. Um, it's basically three things that I see people doing wrong when they do this move, or trying to teach this move. Um, and if you do any one of those three things, it really just takes away from the overall look that this move hopes to achieve, if that makes any sense. Um, and again, this is the move I'm going to be covering. Um, it's probably the most popular single saber move out there. Um, and as such, there's a lot of people that try to learn it and a lot of people that try to teach it. So there's a lot of um, variations that come into it. There's a lot of uh, differences, I guess you could say, between people that do it. And that's probably why there's a lot of controversy on this move. But um, the first thing that I see people doing with this move when they either try to learn it or try to teach it when they're doing it wrong is bringing the saber all the way behind their back. And I'm guilty of these as well. This is just something I figured out. So, this is the first issue I see people having, is bringing the saber all the way behind their back, vertically as you can see I'm doing here. And the reason you don't want to do that is because if you bring the saber all the way behind your back, then you have to turn your body more to get the saber back to the front. And even if you don't turn your body, it's a very awkward movement to get it back around. So that's the first thing you don't want to do, is bringing the saber completely behind your back. The second thing I see is what I call a scooping of the blade. And it really comes from that um, pulling the saber behind your back. And what it is, is you're pulling the saber to the front, around your hip. And you don't want to really pull the saber around your around your hip as you much can't even speak today. Let me try again. You don't want to pull the saber around your hip as much as you want to rotate the saber around your hip. Okay, and I'll get into that a little bit. And um, some side effects of when you scoop the blade is it really just breaks the rhythm of the move. The move, what you want it to look like, you want it to be moving in a circle the entire time and by scooping the blade you're cutting a circle in half so if you watch if I do the move properly the way it should be done okay the blade is actually passing my shoulder as you can see there if I pull the blade to the front you'll see that the blade pretty much stops halfway up my back. Okay, so it's not... It's basically cutting this circle in half. Okay. So that's the second thing. The third thing I see people doing is as they bring that blade to the front, they bring it way out in front of them. Okay and then back around, way out in front, and so on. And that's really, there's really two causes for that. The first thing is that pulling of the blade, okay? And the second reason could be using a very long blade. Like, um, I'm used to initiate blades, which are 24 inches, and here I'm using a 32 inch blade. So, if I were to do this move with a 24 inch blade, you know, I could almost pass it in front of me like that. Whereas with the 32 inch blade, I have to go way out here to do that. Okay, so if you're pulling the blade, that's another cause for that, is having an extra long blade. But if you're doing the move properly, the blade length doesn't really matter because you're rotating it around instead of pulling it out. So, um, I'll go ahead and break the move down and show you how it should be done, avoiding these three things. The 
first thing, again, as I said, is bringing that saber behind your back, like that. Instead of doing that, let me back up a bit. Um, as I taught in this in the um, OB Annie video, as you're bringing that blade down and behind your back, you're um, focusing on the emitter at this point, and you're bringing the emitter pretty much right next to your hip. Okay, so right there. So instead of going all the way behind my back, I'm coming horizontally with the emitter next to my hip. Okay, right there. Now the second thing, once I'm here, my focus shifts from the blade to the pommel. Okay, so here, pretty much as I'm in front and going to the back, my focus is on the blade and I'm rotating the blade in a circle. But when it gets to this point, it shifts to the pommel, and then I focus on rotating that blade, or that pommel, rather. And that's what gives you the difference between pulling the blade and rotating the blade, if you can see that difference, okay? So once I come here, I bring the emitter close to my hip, my focus shifts to the pommel, and I'm bringing the pommel as close as my body as I can get it. And I'm rotating it in a circle in front of me. Okay? Just like that. Rather than pulling it horizontally around my hip. So hip, pommel rotates. As you can see, as I do that, the blade pretty much rests in the crook of my arm here. And that's what allows the blade to actually pass my shoulder like that. Okay? So, rotate the pommel in front of you. And the closer you can keep the saber to your body at this point, the better it's going to look. Okay? So from this point, you're bringing the pommel in a circular motion all the way in front of you. And when you get it to the top, then it completes that circle and goes right back into the move. All right, so by putting all those together, you're preventing that by bringing the pommel, by bringing the saber next to your hip. You're rotating in front instead of pulling it out. And because of that, you're not reaching in front of you as much. You're rotating it, okay? So, a little bit slower. Hip. Rotate. And up, okay? Watch the blade throughout this move. It is constantly moving in a circle. There's no break in it. There's no stopping. And because of that, the move looks a lot smoother. There's less of this stuff going on. There's less turning of the body to get the saber back in front. You know, I can stand completely still and still do this move. It doesn't look as good because you do want a slight turning of the body, but you don't have to overextend to get the blade out in front anymore, okay? All right, so that's the way that move should be look, should look. Um, and you achieve that because of that pommel rotation in front of you. That serves many purposes. It serves to rotate the blade past your shoulder. It serves to keep the saber moving in a circle. And it serves to keep the saber close to your body instead of way out here. Okay.
Um, one way you can practice that rotation is when the saber comes next to your hip. You can actually take the saber in a very, very loose grip to get that rotation. And then when you bring it up to the front again, then you can close that grip, okay? So at this point, you can actually really loosen that grip and that'll help it keep it closer to your body. So from right here, that's pretty much my grip. Okay. Again, you don't have to do that. That'll just give you the feeling that you need. I can actually do this with a closed grip throughout the entire move. It doesn't look as good. It doesn't feel as good. Okay. So again, once you get that emitter next to the hip, you're rotating the blade in front of your body and then back around. Okay, so that's how um, to take those setbacks in the move that I've seen a lot behind the back, um, pulling the blade around, and then pulling it down too far. Okay, so that's how to correct those three main issues to make the move flow a little bit better. Okay. Um, and I would recommend practice that in each hand. You know, getting that feeling down. Especially if you want to do the blade bearer, which is a dual wielding move. Okay. So hopefully that helped. Hopefully that helped um, clarify some things that people were having issues with. Those are probably the three main setbacks that I see a lot of people having with this move, um, especially when doing it fast. Again, if you want to practice this, practice it very slowly and really focus on getting that pommel rotation in because that really is the key to this move and making it look smooth, okay? That part there, okay? So hopefully you found that helpful, hopefully you learned from it, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.